Hey y'all, with this video we're going to begin our work officially with proofs. Uh, so a proof seems intimidating when you first start off in, in math, um, but it's just a, an argument. That's really all it is. And it's deductive because you uh, have to back up what you say with facts. Um, and there are different approaches to proofs. They're called methods or types of proof. Um, some that you'll see in the next few years of your math classes are direct, indirect, conditional, by contradiction, and by induction. And we're going to primarily focus on direct proof in geometry, and we might see a couple of the others throughout the year. Um, but we're going to focus on writing direct proofs. Um, now, when you write a proof, you can choose how you present it to other people, right? So you can write a paragraph proof, which is just, you know, like sentences. You have to think of it as if you're going to have a conversation with somebody, what would you say to prove your point? And that's basically what a paragraph proof is. Uh, we have also the two column proof, which is very straightforward. You make your statement on one column. In the second column, you give the reasoning behind that statement, like why you can say that. And then we have a third type that we're going to look at, which is a flowchart. Now, a flowchart is something that people actually use in the real world, uh, especially people who um, have to write instructions for things or code. Uh, and basically, it's just a concept map that shows all the steps in a procedure in the proper order. Okay, And we use arrows uh, to show the flow of the reasoning or the steps. And we can use these to diagram our proof or to actually be a proof. Here is an example of a flowchart from Algebra 1, and I've chosen the process of writing out the domain. Um, this is a map of the thought process. So the first thing you have to do is ask yourself, huh, do I have a continuous or discrete uh, data set? And then if it's continuous, you ask, well, is it the set of all real numbers? And if it's yes, you write down this, right? If it's discrete, then you just list out all the x values in a set of curly cube braces. Now, in actual use, uh, the shapes used in the flowchart have different meanings. So a decision or a question you have to ask is going to be this kind of shape here. They're going to call it a diamond. Uh, just be aware. Um, and parallelograms are going to be process. I don't have a process step in this. And then a rectangle is going to be like either input or output. In this case, it's output, right? So I had to make a decision. If this was the case, the answer to that uh, decision, um, then this is my output, right? That's basically what a flowchart is. In geometry, we're going to keep it really simple. Um, we're going to just use rectangles for the shapes. And inside the rectangle is going to be the statement. Um, and then underneath the statement, we're going to write the reason or conjecture that allows us to make this statement. OK? Um, and oftentimes, flowcharts uh, aren't necessarily used as the actual proof, but allow you to map out your argument for your proof. And by saying the statement and the reason together, it's really easy to then convert it to two column or paragraph. And so here's an example. And this is one you're going to use uh, quite often. So I have some shape. You know, it's generic, so you don't know actually what the shape is. But I know that uh, segment AB is congruent to segment AB, right? Because it's congruent to itself. And remember, we said that property was the reflexive property. So if I ever have to like state that this side is equal to itself, then I can write that statement in a rectangle. And the reason is the reflexive property. So now let's actually try our hand at creating our first proof. Um, I have uh, been given triangle ABC with side AB congruent to BC, and BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC, and I want to prove that BD is a median of triangle ABC. So first off, um, general strategy tips. Um, this is the number one strategy for geometry, is if a picture has not been given to you, you draw it and you label it. 
Okay. Uh, second thing, uh, and this is kind of a new thing for us, after all the triangle congruencies, you're going to actually look for congruent triangles because you're going to get a lot out of it. Okay, so let's uh, have the picture drawn first. All right, so I have my picture. This is all of the information has been marked. I have triangle ABC. BD is the angle bisector. I've marked those two angles as congruent, and I've labeled them angle 1 and angle 2 just to make my life a little easier later on. And then I've marked side AB congruent to BC. Now, I'm going to think about what I have here. Well, I know I've got a lot of stuff here. I can take many different approaches to show that BD is a median, but I'm going to take the approach first that I'm going to look for congruent triangles. And I'm going to start with what I'm given. So I know that AB is congruent to BC. Okay, so this is one of the things that I've been I've been given. Okay, and I also know that uh, BD is the angle bisector of angle ABC, right? And I also know that this line segment BD is congruent to itself by that reflexive property, right? So I have these three facts that I know. This was given, this was given, and this I can prove by the reflexive property. Well, these three pieces give me a side, almost an angle, and decide. I don't quite have an angle yet here because I can make a conclusion from this, right? If BD is the angle bisector, then I know by definition of angle bisector that angle one is congruent to angle two, right? And so now I have a side, an angle, and a side, and I can say that triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CDB, right? Oopsie, got a flow. And then from there, I have these triangles congruent and so what I'm looking for, if I want BD to be a median, I need AD to equal DC. And I can get AD, line segment AD congruent to line segment DC, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? CPCTC. And then I know if those two, point, those two line segments are congruent, that D has to be the midpoint of AC. And if I know D is the midpoint of AC, then I know, by definition, that BD has to be the median. All right, so now that I figured out the way my argument is going to flow, it's time to turn this into a proper flow chart and turn that flow chart into an actual proof. So in order to do that, I gotta add my arrows, right? So I have AB and my reasons, right? AB is congruent to BC. This was given, right? And BD was an angle bisector, was also given. And BD's congruent to BD was reflexive, right? So now I'm going to put my arrows in. So I know that this BD angle bisector is what allowed me to say that angle 1 was congruent to angle 2. And then I know that this... Uh, given AB is congruent to BC, and that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and BD being equal to itself, all flows in to the argument that triangle ADB and triangle CDB are congruent by side angle side, right? And then, of course, this flows into this, AD being congruent to DC by corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent, and this flows into that. Uh, D is the midpoint by definition of the midpoint. And I know that this, uh, D being the midpoint, makes BD a median, goes, uh, flows into this final argument, this conclusion, I should say, uh, definition of triangle median, right? And so this is my flowchart proof. Now, what we just proved with that flowchart was half of conjecture 28, the vertex angle bisector conjecture. It says, in an isosceles triangle, the bisector of the vertex angle is also the median to the base, that's the part we proved, and the altitude, which has yet to be proven. Now, we already knew this was true from our work with points of concurrency, but now we can actually prove that it's true without having to do constructions. And so now our final conjecture uh, the equilateral equilangular triangle conjecture. Uh, 
a triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equilangular. We kind of already knew that was true. I'm presenting this one now uh, for a specific reason because of this if and only if to remind you that this is what's considered a biconditional statement. Um, basically what I have is two conjectures. Um, one is the converse of the other, but they're both true. So if I have a triangle that's equilateral, then I know it's equilangular, and then I can swap the two if I have an equilangular triangle, therefore then I know it's equilateral. And so when I have to prove a biconditional statement, I have to actually show that both directions are true. I have to prove given equilateral, therefore equilangular, and then given equilangular, therefore equilateral. So when we're doing proofs, remember, these kinds of statements, you really have to prove two statements.